Hello YouTube, XCT here. Today we are solving Anubis, a 50-point Windows machine on Hack the Box, which involves an ASP template injection, Windows containers and stealing hashes with Responder. Then I show an unintended Active Directory attack, where we'll escalate privileges from a normal domain user to domain admin. So this port scan shows that we have RPC and we have a website here on port 443. And we can also see that in a certificate we get a domain name. So probably have to use that one. Um, there's SMB and there's another RPC port, but we can't really do anything with that. So let's have a look at the website. And here we get some kind of company page. There's an email address um, at the top here. Let's see, lots of example text, um, a few usernames. Um, here are a few more. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, we can see that there's a contact form here. So let's just put something here. And this is pretty interesting. Um, basically, it's showing us our input again, and this time the server is rendering it for us. So every time you have something like this, there's a chance there's something like an XSS or a template injection in case the user input isn't really sanitized, but then reflected back to the user. So let's try to confirm that. I just try to put an alert here. Yeah, and we indeed have an XSS here. But, um, in this case, it won't help because there's no bot or anything visiting the page, so we can't really do anything with that. And in order to search for template injections and all of that, we would probably need to know which kind of technology was used to build the site. So let's have a look in Burp here. Send that again. And we can see that this is an ASP page, so we got to research about that a bit. So if you just Google for ASP introduction, you'll find this page here. and it's basically just an HTML page. You have these texts here, and then you can write VB script code. And that's maybe something we can do, right? So let's see if we can find anything good from the examples here. Um, date and time, maybe. And let's just try to see if that would give us any output. Yeah, and you can see that we actually get the date back. So we can execute ASP code here. Now we just have to write some code that will do something interesting for us, right? And basically what we can do is we can put these tags and then we use create object um, wscript.shell exec and here we can write any command we want to execute. So what are we going to execute? Well, I'm just going to go for a PowerShell reverse shell here and I'm going to use um, Cybershell to encode it just like that, it's a default one here, right? Um, just encode, going to paste that here. And if everything works, should be able to start a listener here and then send that again. And here we go. We get a shellback as system. But this box isn't over. Um, if we go to users here, we can see that there's a container administrator and container user. So it's probably safe to say that we are in some kind of container here. Let's see. Let's look for open ports here. Um, this is pretty much what we've seen from the outside. And there are no um, like Kerberos or LDAP ports or anything. So this isn't really the seed, it's really just a container. Let's check our IP here. Okay, so this seems to be our container IP address. And we also have a gateway here. So the gateway is probably because this is a container, um, the host. So we got to keep that IP here in mind. Um, it would be good to have a pivot now, right? So in order to set up a pivot, let's just use MSF Venom like that. So let's get that file onto the box. And let's execute it. And here we go, we got a show. You want to have a pivot into the network. So let's do auto route here. And let's use that one here. And because we suspected the host system to be in this network, right? So now Metasploit knows where to find this network. And what we can also do is we can set up a SOX proxy. 
rendered and now we should be able to use proxy chains to reach this network. So with the pivot set up, let's see if we can actually reach that system. And yeah, we found the domain controller. Let's see if there's anything interesting um, on this web page here. So just do proxy chains again and then do curl. But it's just giving us a 404, so we are probably missing the correct host name here. And at this point, we don't really know it yet. So let's look around in the container a bit. Maybe there's something here. So check the administrator folder here. And there's this request.txt here. And here we get a CSR certificate request. So let's copy that one as well. These certificate requests can be read by OpenSSL. So let's try that. Maybe we find a host name in there. So we got our request here. And if we use OpenSSL request dash in and give it the file. There's a dash missing here. Yeah, now we get the details about this certificate request. And yeah, here we get another domain, which is softwareportal.wincorp.htb. Let's save that one as well. And we're gonna add that to our hosts file. And now let's try to do that curl again, but this time to the correct domain name. Yeah, and now we get a proper web page back here. Um, but we want to really view that in a browser. So let's head over to Chrome here. Um, I set the proxy plugin to point to the SOX proxy. Now we should be able to reach that one. Yeah, and here we get a new web page, this WinCorp software portal. And this seems like um, some kind of self-install service where you can select the software you want and then it will get installed on your box. So let's try to just click one of these links. And it's starting the installation of this package. At least it says so, but yeah, it's not really doing anything. Let's just do that again and copy the link here. So let's have a look at this link again. Um, there's an install.asp and we're giving it here the IP of the system. It should install the stuff on, I think. Let's see what happens if we point that to our system. Well, if you think about how this should work, it will probably try to log into our system, copy over the software and then install it, right? So there's a chance there could be some SMB authentication um, or something like that. Let's um, try to point that actually to our IP and see if any authentication is happening. So we can do a curl request here. But we have no listener at this point, so let's just start Responder and see um, if we can get anything. So Responder is running. Um, we have SMB listening, so, so let's send this curl request here via our proxy chains. And it's giving us this installing message again. Let's see if we got any hit here. And yeah, we get a request here from the box from a user called local admin. And that seems to be the user which is um, usually installing the software. Let's save that hash and try to crack it with John. And yeah, here we go. We got our first domain user, which is local admin with this password. Now, the usual way you would proceed here is you would run Bloodhound because now we have a user. You could try Kerberosting, um, just enumerating a bit more. But I know that this box was a bit older and there was a wonderful CVE or really two CVEs released um, at the end of last year. And I'm going to show how to exploit these to get a system shell here. And in this Fortinet blog post here, they explain the CVEs and the underlying issues. Um, you probably have come across it. It was called like Sam the Admin or NoPack. And basically these two CVEs combined allow you to get domain administrator privileges. And the way this works is that the first CVE is basically um, telling us that computer accounts should always end with a dollar sign, um, but this is not correctly enforced. So you could, um, when this wasn't patched, rename the machine account to not end in a dollar sign. And this doesn't seem like a big deal at this point, but combined with the other CVE, um, it can be used for interesting stuff. 
And then we have this second CVE here, which is um, called Kairos Key Distribution Center Confusion. The essential point here is that when a request for a service ticket is sent and it's not found, the KDC will automatically look up the requested service ticket appended with the dollar sign. You can see that they both kind of involve this dollar sign and we can actually combine that. So the way this is actually exploited is you create a new computer account, then rename this computer account to the name of the DC, but without the dollar sign at the end. So basically you set the same account name, right? Um, then you get a TGT for this machine account, which you created yourself. And after you have this TGT cached locally, you rename your machine account back um, or reset it. Um, and now you request a service ticket with the cached TGT you already have using s for you to self. And remember this, this computer account doesn't really exist anymore. So what the KDC is doing, it's appending the dollar sign and finds the real one, the real domain controller. And we get a service ticket for that one. And because we used s for you to self, we basically get all the privileges the domain controller has. So to actually execute the attack, there's this wonderful repository here called NoPack. And if we scroll down, we can see the usage. Auto get shell, that sounds amazing. We just give it a domain user, DDC IP, the DC host name, we need that one. Um, and then which user we want to impersonate on the DC. So we don't really have the host name of the DC yet, right? Um, we could run Bloodhound, sure but we can also use just um, crack map exec to get it. That's a bit quicker, right? So let's just do crack map exec SMB um, against the DC. Yeah, and here we can get the host name, which is Earth. Now, another thing we gotta do is we gotta make sure we have the same time as the server as with any cover or attacks really. And I'm just going to get the one from the web server here. So that should be good in case the web server and um, domain have the same time, which they do in this case. Yeah, and then we just got to copy the whole command we just saw in the readme. Um, we have the domain name, we have the user, the password, the DCIP, the name we just got here. And that should basically be it. So let's run that. And here we can see the steps I just described being executed. Um, one requirement is that we can actually create machine accounts, um, but I think there's also a version of this exploit where you don't have to have that one. Um, in this case, we can create 10 machines, which is default in Windows domains. Um, we can see it's adding this computer account, writing us the password here of our new account. Um, then it's changing the same account name to Earth um, without the dollar sign at the end. It's saving the ticket. It's resetting the name of the machine account back to the original, and then it's using this cached TGT to get a service ticket with s for you to self. Um, the KDC will be confused, it will add the dollar sign and we actually get the ticket for the domain controller. And yeah, here we go. The final part actually gives us a shell here with this auto shell feature. And we are system, so the only thing really left to do here is to get the flag, so let's do that. And I think we missed the user flag totally here. So let's see where that one could be. Probably in this user here, right? So yeah, here we get the user flag as well. So the official way involves exploiting Jump Movie and then impersonating an administrator via certificates. I'm not going to show that one, but I'm sure OXDF or IPSEC have it. So I recommend you, you read his post or watch IPSEC's video if you're interested in that. Thanks again for watching and if you liked the video please subscribe, click the like button and see you next time.